Hey friends, for the first time ever on this channel, we're actually going to be taking a look at something that I've already played before. This is a horror game called We Never Left, and it was originally part of a collection of horror games called the Dread X Collection 5. Recently, it's just been released as a standalone game on itch.io for free, so I recommend you guys go check it out. But when it comes to today's playthrough, if I've already experienced this horror game before, why am I playing it for you guys? Well, to put it simply, I don't really remember much about about the specifics regarding this game. I know that it was one of my favorites from the collection when I originally played it, and I know that the game is legitimately terrifying. I remember this game being something really special though, so when I heard about the standalone release, I wanted to show it to you guys. It's not gonna be a typical playthrough for us, but that's okay. I still think we're gonna have fun. I hope that you guys have been enjoying the videos, and I hope that you and your families are safe. Every day when I check the comments on my YouTube uploads, I'm reminded about why our community is so special. You guys are just kind, and I do not take that for granted, ever. With that being said, here is We Never Left. Yeah, I don't, I really don't remember much about this game. Uh, there were 12 games, I believe, in the Dread X 5 collection. It's still on Steam. Autosave system. I don't think this game is too long or anything like that. I remember it has to do with game development. Dread XP is a, I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about them before. They're a fantastic indie horror publishing group. Um, really awesome group of people that have done a lot of great stuff for the indie horror scene. This dev is also working like on a big full survival horror project too, which is really exciting because this is so great. You guys are going to see what I'm talking about. I don't remember the specifics. You guys are going to see what I'm talking about. I remember this being one of the standout games on the Dread X Collection 5. Which was one of the best Dread X collections. So, very high praise. We never left. I can't wait for the sixth one. I don't know when it's coming out. They haven't announced it. Dread X? Can we, uh, can we start working on that? If you guys don't know what the Dread X Collection games are, you should check them out. They're really cool. Um, I've played all of them, and I really recommend them. The third is the weakest. The second and the fifth are the best. The game starts with a phone call. Uh, hello, this is William, and you don't know me, but your cousin Michael works for me at Claustra Studios, and he has not shown up to work at all this week, and nobody in the office has heard from him. So, of course, I stopped by his house to see if he was okay, and his car was in the driveway, and I swear I thought I saw someone walk by the attic window, but nobody answered the door. Um, but I did find a note on the door, which is why I'm calling you. Okay. And it just has your name, number, and a message that says... Finish, finish the, game. the game. Yep, so, okay. Um, you know, Michael's known around the office for being uh, a little bit off, but this is strange, like, really strange even for him. And, you know, as I'm sure you know, he typically keeps very to himself, but he has talked a little about you and how you guys used to write the... Uh, uh, choose your own adventure stories together. I'm remembering this now. So, you know, I hope you know what this all means. And, of course, I hope Michael is okay. But we really need to get in touch with him. So, we They're worried more touch, about his shift than his safety, it seems. Uh, okay. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. So. Michael is missing our cousin, Michael. And the job calls us. And says, hey, we don't know where Michael is. We found a note with your name on it that says finish the game. Text-based adventure gameplay adventure love getting stuff for free to break. Okay, yes, I remember the text-based adventure stuff. So, he's developing a text-based adventure game. I love the graphics in this game. 
absolutely love the graphics. It's almost hard to see what you're doing, but the artistic direction is so strong that I am 100% for it. I love it. Michael gave me this house key years ago. I don't know why, but he insisted I keep it. We haven't spoken in years. They used to hang out and apparently talked about making a text-based adventure game together. Here's our house key. Get some lights on in here. I agree. Get some lights on. So let's take a look around the house. There's, there's still a lot. I don't remember. I, I vaguely remember this house. I remember this door being boarded up. That I do remember. And I vaguely remember the house. Let's go ahead and take a look around. There's gotta be light switches somewhere, right? Boom. Get some lights on. Breaker box, cover. Nope. Let's see. Where's the light switch here? Is there not one in the kitchen? You guys don't have a light switch here? There we go. Okay, so the house seems to be well lit. Here's a photograph, a photograph of an old house. Okay. A picture of a living room, never seen this place before. Looks like it's only lit with the camera flash. If I want to listen, I'll need something to play this on. Well, I don't remember- oh, there's a note. I don't remember why there's pictures. Journal entry. March 15th, 1983. I've been at work pretty relentlessly trying to make something great. A lot of the work has just been watching movies, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Shining, etc. They're fine, but it needs something else, and I'm just not sure what. When I watch Jason Voorhees chasing campers, I feel nervous, sure. But scared? I feel tense and I feel worried for the character, but I know that I'm okay, so I don't feel that horror. I don't feel like I'm in any danger. It feels so disingenuous. Plus, it's really difficult to capture that visual aspect with the tech I have available. All I really have is text, text, and more text. I'm not much of a reader, but maybe I should check out the Shining novel. Could translate better to my games. March 17th, 1983. I've thought more about it. I think I was wrong. Maybe the technology won't allow me much in the way of visual horror, but that doesn't mean I can't find an another way. I'll keep trying, but I think I'm onto something. Then March 18th, he says, I've got it. So, he's developing his game, game console here. I think we can actually play this. Looks like a good enough time waster. Can we play this? Let me just double check. I think we can. I think there's like a mini game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to play this for too long. But basically, you just... Maneuver your ship and aim at little guys. When I originally played this on the Dreadx Collection, I do remember, like, racking up a massive score on that game. Oh, here's another one. February 7th. This is earlier. 1983. Dr. Miller has suggested that I start writing my thoughts into a journal. According to her, it can help me sort through my more difficult thoughts. I hate that term, difficult thoughts. I don't think wanting to create my best work is something to be thought of as difficult. Maybe I'll stick to it, but I don't really see that happening. So he's calling this idea for his game his best work. It's something he's obsessed with doing. February 8th, 1983. I just got back home from work and I'm so sick of being there. No one understands my vision. I thought when I decided to work in computer games that I would be able to stretch my legs a bit and finally bring my art to the world. But no, they're all so tame. They say that my ideas are too dark. It's not too dark, it's horror. There's a difference. They want to make games about dragons and knights and fantasy quests. 
I frankly don't care about saving some princess. It's shallow. According to them, horror isn't marketable. We need to meet our quotas. No one will want to play something that's this twisted. Screw them. I'm gonna do this myself. Interesting. Interesting. It's coming back to me, gamers. I'm not sure if you can tell by the look on my face here. March 28th, 1983. This is a bit later, I think. I think. Dr. Miller says I'm using the journal wrong. She says I need to get out my emotions and my anxieties. I'm not disturbed. I'm just passionate. She doesn't get it. No one gets it. I'm on the verge of creating the next evolution of horror entertainment, and people are just saying my brain is messed up for having these horrid thoughts in the first place. It's not like I think that way personally. Is Dario Argento sadistic because he directed a movie where dancers are getting sacrificed to a cult? No. People call him a genius. How is what I'm doing any different? I'm making a character. April 2nd, 1983. Multimedia. That's the key. I figured it all out. I like where this is going. I've got a plan in place. I just need to execute. Everyone's going to see that I'm a real artist. This game is going to be different than anyone has ever seen. My magnum opus. Not sure if I read that right, but I will. You guys give me a pass on that. Okay. So he's clearly very, very, very excited about the potential of his idea, his magnum opus. Let's go ahead real quick. I think I did see something I can play these tapes on, though. It's a radio. No, I guess not. Okay, we're gonna go to the bedroom. That's a bathroom. That's fine. There's another tape. Alright, so there's three tapes, it seems. And this is the bedroom. Now, one thing about this house is it doesn't look like he was planning on leaving. He just up and left. We can see everything all over the place on the, uh, you know, the gaming area in the living room. Computer... Okay, this is where we play the text-based adventure game. Please insert a data storage device. Ah, don't have that yet. Okay. Probably need to go find that. This is some sort of clue. Why is it written front and back? Front, have you been seeing everything you need or have you been missing something? What do you mean? Missing something? Um, I definitely don't have a passcode of any kind yet. Litter box, cats, another photograph, a picture of a woman reading in her living room from an outside window. Who's taking these pictures? Instruction sheet. This could come in handy. How to play text games. Keep your phrases simple. Common commands. Exam. Or examine and go to, followed by your target. Uh, like, go to the door. Okay, you must specify if you like to use an item on something by typing your desired action. Followed by the object in item. Format is action object with item. Unlock the door with the key. Okay. Gotcha. That's simple enough. And I think... I don't remember me having much trouble with it. So... I don't think it's going to be an issue. Like when I first did it. I think we need to find a floppy disk of some kind. Missing something. Yeah, I think we need to find some sort of a floppy disk. Detergent. Don't know why I would need that. Breaker box. Why is this door boarded up? Something seems off. 
So where would that floppy disk be then? That's what I want to know. Because I remember there being one in the game. Like, that's how you play the text space adventure. It's on the bathroom, is it? What the hell is that sound? What is it doing here? Okay, we have the tape recorder. And another journal entry. April 20th, 1983. Everything is in place. I haven't slept in days, but this is going to be worth every second of exhaustion. I keep getting calls from work asking where I've been. I don't see the point in answering. They never understood, so why would they start now? I'm about to make a better game than any of those assholes could ever imagine. There are a lot of risks involved, but this is some really good stuff. Time to create true or April 25th, 1983. I've picked my playtester. I needed someone special. Someone who I felt that, if anyone, would understand the importance of what I'm doing. He didn't like my idea as much when, the, when we were just writing stories, but I've matured. I know how to execute. Everything is perfect. Sure seems that way. I was going to say something, and then I'm like, you know what, let's... Let's keep it a surprise for the gamers. I'm starting to remember some stuff, and I'm not going to reveal it to you guys before it happens. Um, let's go ahead and check out these tapes, then, now that we have a tape recorder. And... recording. Okay, this is Dr. Miller. It's currently... February 12th, 1983, and I'm talking with Michael Krieger, age 33. 32. Right, sorry, age 32. How are you feeling today, Michael? I mean, I've been worse. Been up to anything exciting? I had to put on some Burt's Bees. No, not really. I've been watching a lot of movies, but that's about it. Oh, what movies? Mostly horror movies. Yep. Oh, I can't. Voice <laughs> acting's very good in this game, by I'm the way. a bit too jumpy. Why horror movies? Because they're good. I guess the feeling I'm trying to get. It's like I'm so numb. Maybe if I find the right movie, it'll make me feel something. But it's like... It's like none of them are enough. Mm. I can see enough. how that could be frustrating. Yeah. Okay, let's look for that um, uh, floppy disk. Have you uh, uh, been writing in a journal, like I suggested? Oh, yeah. I actually think I'm taking to it a bit more than I expected. Well, that's great to hear. Is there a reason you've had a change of heart about it? I know you weren't super thrilled last time we talked. Yeah. Yeah, I think I found a use for it. Well, that's really great to hear. So, um, I did want to ask about where we left off last. I know I you don't, don't remember. Like to talk about it, but are you having any more thoughts of hurting others? Where that floppy yourself? disk is. We're going to listen to the conversation listen, anyway, I, though, so... I know what I wrote on the papers. It, it sounds bad, but it's more fantasy than anything. It, it's not like I'm planning on doing anything. They're just... They're just stories. Yeah, but... I understand that. The excuse of they're just they stories... Coming to mind. ...only I'm goes honest. so far. I'm okay. 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 Journal updated... Let's go find the others. It's not here, is it? I really don't remember where this is. Maybe we have to listen to all the cassette tapes first? Maybe that will kind of clue us in on what to do? We are recording. This is Dr. Miller. It is March 20th, 1983. And I'm speaking with Michael Krieger, age 32. How are you doing today, Michael? Actually, um, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. I think I've got something figured out. Um, what do you His mean His voice that? sounds so much more excited. Like, uh, you remember last session how I talked about feeling stuck? I think I found a way out. Oh, and, and how's that? How is that? I decided to make my own game. Something that no one at the company would understand. It's gonna be amazing. Right. And, uh, what does everyone at work think uh, about this? I... I haven't gone in a, in a few days. Uh, so where would he put that? And why is that? I just... 
I, I, I feel stifled there. Do I need to find a way to open the chest? Is that the problem? Let me look at the photographs again real quick. I need to focus on this one There might be something on the photographs. Well, I'm glad you found something. But something I'm missing. Please remember, you need to take care of yourself. Too. I know. I, I know. Trust me, this is all going to be great. Ah, that's it. Well, it's There's a code. It's There's a code on the back. Okay. I know it. And are you still writing? So, let's look at the order oh, of these yeah, notes. Yeah. Would I be allowed to see it? Mm, not just yet. So, these it's, are it's not quite finished yet. Finished? Uh, yeah, Feb from fun. February. So, this should be the first. Which I'm there's not, nothing on I'm there. Not sure what you mean. Um, the journal isn't exactly something you finish. February. It's more like a continuous stream of thought. I know, just um just, Late soon. March, this okay. one, is a nine. Okay. Late March is a nine. Early March is a nine, so nine nine something. And where was that other note? Nine nine oh. I thought I saw something. Nine nine three. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and listen to this while we do it. Oh, totally forgot right about that. And good. Okay, my name is Dr. Miller. It is January 23rd, 1983. Could you state your name and age? Hey, why is this being recorded? Boom. This is just for record keeping and review purposes. I promise that these tapes- Thank you, office. we'll take that. Okay. The computer game is called so, Massacre 1983. This is the first one. And what brings you to see me today, Michael? I thought I filled all that out on the paper. Here we go. Yes, but I always like to ask. Text-based adventure nice game. We got this, guys. Well, I am. Um, Massacre, 1983. Could you expand on that at all? A lot of it is work. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to work for a video game company. It's, it's what I love to do. I just. Let me back out real quick. No, no, it's okay. Say it how you feel it. You don't have to I'm, uh, I'm waiting for this to run out. I just thought I'd be able to express myself a bit more, you know? I'm, I'm really craving that. Because I want to read for you guys with the text based adventure game. I think there's game. a market for those fantasy games we make, but I, I just feel like I could be making more. What do you mean by. So he's basically explaining again, like we've talked about previously. Something that he feels. Feel something? I don't know. You know. And is this like his magnum opus, multimedia no, horror project, it's a big cause of it. is not being realized at the job he's at. Okay. So, um, I did want to talk to you about what you wrote in your paperwork. There are certain things that I find. Okay. I'm concerning. trying to I figure really out how like we can talk about that if you're able. Stop the recording. Not, I, at least not yet. I'm, I'm just not. No, no, no. It's okay. I understand. Okay. Circle back we to that later. Let's go. Good. Okay. Back to the game. Sorry about that, guys. You feel heavy with both the weight of your cargo and your conscience. As your bare toes graze the asphalt beneath you through your worn shoes, you marched onward. You knew exactly where to go next. The axe you lugged behind you made a screeching noise as the metal grinded across the street. You arrive at your destination, the old Miller house. A quaint, rustic home with two floors. There's a door directly in front of you. Behind you on your left is an old car. To your right, a path to the backyard. So, let's do... Oh, sorry. Go to... Old car. You take a look at the car. It's an old and rusted sedan. There's a story to this car. You can't quite put your finger on it. The smell is one of the old... Scrap yards and metalwork. You look through the window. The keys are sitting inside. Break window with axe. The glass shatters with a loud crash. Not too loud, you hope. You peer inside the vehicle. There are a set of keys left out on the dash. Grab keys. You grab the keys from the car. Go back. So here we are back to the start. Hold left control. 
Um, go to door. You approach the front door. It's a beautiful shade of red. The architecture sets the scene perfectly. What's happening feels like a true moment. Use keys on front door. None of these schemes seem to fit the lock. Okay. Open front door. The door is locked. Okay, that's what I thought. We're going to go back. Um, and we're going to head to the backyard. Go to backyard. Fun fact about me, I never learned to type, so I still hunt and peck like a velociraptor. You move quietly to the backyard. It's not as spacious as you would have thought, but the grass is trimmed perfectly. The patio is dimly lit by a dying light fixture, and the back door sits at the end of a short stone path. Uh... We're gonna go to... Back door. Oh. It's not one word. You approach the back door. It's a flimsy screen door that stands in front of a more sturdy wooden one. Uh, use keys on back door. Door unlocks with a lovely clicking sound. This is what you've been waiting for. And the power goes out, and I hope our game progress saved. Computer trip to circuit. Okay, well, good thing we have a flashlight. Hello? Why did this knock over? Okay. How did someone get in here, though? Okay, well, we should be able to play the game again, at least. Okay, back to the game. You step in the house, feels almost like your own home. It's such a nostalgic structure, you could almost feel the lives that were created and lost by this house. And you want to be a part of that story to crave you or you crave to be a part of that story directly in front of you stands a staircase leading upstairs to your immediate left is a small kitchen further onward you see the living room um uh go to the living room You step in the living room, it's another part of that story. Pictures are hung up across the wall showing a happy elderly couple. Young children are seen scattered amongst the photos. Grandchildren? You love them all. You're a part of this family and their story in your head. Um... Okay, so nothing in the living room. Let's do... Go to the kitchen. You move left into the kitchen. The room is very drab. Tile floors and walls make the whole place feel clinical. There's an odd smell emitting from a bowl of fruit on the table. You hate it here. You want to go back. Okay, well, we'll do just that. So I guess they want us to head upstairs. You creep slowly on the stairs. You try with every ounce of willpower you can muster not to let your axe bump up the stairs. The smile on your face. Ooh, it's music. Is almost painful. The excitement is unbearable. You shake in eagerness. Up the stairs, you see only a straight path to a bedroom. Go to bedroom. You sneak to the bedroom door. It's cracked open ever so slightly. You can feel the mild breeze of a running fan from inside. This is your time. Uh, open door. Walking inside, you step with such care not to make any spots on the floor creak. 
you see an elderly couple laying in bed. They look so at peace. The man sleeps comically with his mouth hanging open. The woman lays flat on her stomach. You want to look closer. Okay. Look closer. You approach the bed. You can see the man's chest rise up and down so slowly. So, so slowly. It's your time. Um... Well, I think... I think we know what we have to do. Use the axe. Kill... them? Oh, you can't do it with your bare hands. Kill them with axe. You raise the axe above your head. You remember it being heavier. This feels... right. You grip the base of the wooden handle with the greatest of care before flinging the metal wedge down on the man's stomach. His eyes jolt open and he, fling, and he flings himself. Did y'all hear that? Fling, flings himself for a moment trying to sit upright. Your smile hurts. The woman wakes up immediately. She's clearly distraught but is unable to make a sound. Her husband is still alive, choking on his own blood. You walk up to the woman slowly. She's helpless. You raise the axe over your head with the same care and thrust it down between the woman's eyes. Her warm blood splatters your face. This feeling, you could bathe in it. It's a rush the likes of which you've never experienced. This is your family now. You're a part of this story. The man stops choking to be continued. Great game! Someone's knocking on our door and it's freaking me out. That shadow is also freaking me out. All right. I'm coming. Oh. And there's a trail of blood. Interesting. Now what could that mean? I don't remember that knocking part. This is Dr. Miller. I'm So we got the second game. Krieger, age 32. It is April 16th, 1983. Okay. How have you been doing, Michael? Michael, I asked, how are you? Michael? Like you care. Oh! Excuse me? I know you don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure where this is coming from. Why is he being so cold? I found the thing that makes me feel better. And you tell me it's wrong. Well, when you put it like that... Michael, I understand your frustration. But this... Project Wait a minute, let me check something. Seems unhealthy. I understand you're passionate about this horror game, but some of the things hmm. you're writing seem sadistic. I don't remember. And I think it would be best if don't we... you dare what's in Tell here. Tell me what's best for me, you fucking bitch. Whoa! Um, I... Come on, man. Hey. And... No, I'm done with this. I found what makes me feel better. And voice acting is great. Like I said, I create a masterpiece in gaming. Hell, I'm, I'm creating a masterpiece gaming. of any art form. Why would you want to take that away from me? I'm sorry, Michael, but I don't think this is good for you. Don't pretend like you know you scared what's good for now? me. You know I've spent my You're whole dealing life with just wanting to create. I just want for. so bad to let the world know what's going on inside my brain, and I finally found the message I want to send. I'm going to be the horror auteur of the fucking millennium. Dude. Do you know what it's like to be told your entire life that your ideas are shit? It's too dark. It's disturbed. Your entire it's life? It's art. Bro, how long have you been working at that job? My art can be. He leaves. In a huff. So now we're playing the game. We never left. Inside of the game, we never left. It's like playing Doom inside of Doom. Inside of Doom on a TI-87 inside of Doom. Here it is. This is what I'm assuming and what I remember to be the Magnum Opus. And I press the wrong button again. Here we go. You trek along the road in the dead of night. The cold air fills your lungs as you creep onward. A trail of blood streaks behind you like the slime of a snail. You can't shake the grin on your face. The axe you drag behind you makes a clanking sound as it hits the concrete with every one of your steps. It's the most beautiful rhythm you've ever heard. 
you come upon an all too familiar home, a single level house with an attic for storage. So many hours spent inside, work, 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 never enough. However, this house is not empty. He's here. To your left is an unfamiliar car. Looking ahead, you see the front door. Let's go to the car. You approach the car. It's nicer than yours and you hate it. The interior is clean and put together. You're such a slob. Disgusting. The tires look freshly pumped, full of air. Um, use axe on tires. You thrust the wedge of the axe into the car's tires. They let out a satisfying pop and hiss. He's not going anywhere. Go back. You check along the road, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Go to the front door. So what do you guys think might be happening here? You walk to the front door. It's been left unlocked. You know that he's distracted inside. Open front door. You step into the living room. You stand inside for a moment and allow the memories to flood back. It's horrid. To your right is the laundry room. Further in front of you is the dining room. To your left is a hallway. We'll say go to laundry room. You step through the doorway into the laundry room. The smell of detergent fills your nose. More laundry will need to be done soon enough. In front of you is the coffee room. Behind you is the living room. Coffee room is an interesting name for a room. I don't have a coffee room in my house. The coffee room is quaint. A small box of a room with a table and chairs. It's made to relax. Laundry room. Okay. Um... Let's go to the kitchen. I don't think we need to do anything with the circuit breaker. The kitchen is just as you remembered. It feels so nostalgic. So many hours spent reheating frozen TV dinners. I had to use the dining room, coffee room. Garage door. You stand in front of the garage door. The wood boards you had added still stand sturdy against the wall. Maybe it's time for him to see. Use axe on wood boards. Um, open garage door. Hmm. Let's go ahead and Can I take off wood boards? Remove wood boards. You cannot do this with your bare hands. You put your force into a great swing. The boards all split by your hand. The garage is open. Come and see. Okay. Let's take him up on his offer. Allegedly. Okay. So... Yes. He's in our home, very much so. Dead cat. Michael's dead cat, Sabrina. Her entrails are splayed out on the hood. That's disgusting. Dr. Miller, muffled, unintelligible. Oh my god. Here they are. For the art. Yeah. So, one, two, three bodies. I'm thinking Dr. Miller and the two elderly couple, or the, the, the one elderly couple. Here we go.
Okay, I saw. Is there something I missed? From there? Because I don't... Oh! That needs to be closed. Okay. Did I miss something from here? I'm wondering if I missed a... game of some sort. Oh, there's four. Oh, attic key. Is this all some sort of sick game? I don't even know if I wanted to go up there. I'll take that. Oh, there's another picture. It's a photo of a woman sleeping, yeah. So the photos he took were of... There's a man there. There's a man in that hallway. This game was also made by one person in two months, I believe. Less than that, probably. Which is awesome. And here we go. Play me. Hello, this is Michael Krieger, age 32. There's a lot of bodies here, actually. There were four in the garage. Three up here. Right. I uh, just need uh, a few more um, <laughs> participants to act as props, and then uh, everything will be set up perfectly. So this is what he meant by multimedia. For some years now, but you have the game, and you have the, what's occurring in real life, as, soon as, work is as well as the audio recordings. It's really cool. Where did he go up here? A bit freaked out right now, but uh, I wouldn't be doing my job if you weren't. I just know that of anyone, you'd understand the importance of what I'm doing. Right. Now I know, I, I know you weren't a fan of my ideas when we were kids, but I, I can only assume you've matured since then. Right? Of course, I get uh, what it. Am I, saying? I see I know the vision. Here we go. You step into the living room, you can feel every moment of anticipation rush past you as you become aware that you're creating your masterpiece. You are a true artist in every sense of the word. This guy's uh, very egotistical, it seems. To your left is the hallway, to your immediate right is the laundry room. Let's go to hallway. You step into the hallway, the carpet is dull, the walls are bland, to your left is the bathroom, ahead and to your right is the bedroom, directly in front of you is the ladder to the attic. Go to the attic. You shouldn't go up yet, set the scene, dim the lights, oh okay, the hallway's behind you. Okay. I know what to do. Let's go ahead and go to the living room. We're gonna turn off the circuit breaker. Oh. Ugh. Um. It's in the coffee room. So we're going to shut off. Open circuit breaker. 
Should I say go to circuit breaker? Circuit breaker is an old rusty box. Inside sits a switch. Flip switch. You flip the switch. There's a metallic click before the world becomes drenched in darkness. Everything is perfect. The laundry room is to your immediate right behind you is the kitchen. Okay. We gotta work our way back. Um... Go to the attic. You step slowly up the attic's ladder, one foot in front of the other, each step making a subtle creaking sound. You pull yourself up using the axe for leverage. All around you are your past works. None have held the same feeling as this. This is special. Directly opposite of you, across the room, is a man at the computer. You want to get closer. I'm going to turn around. Oh, I can't. <laughs> it doesn't let you. Get closer. You step ever so closer to the man. He appears to be... I forgot about that. That is... Chef's kiss. I love that. He appears to be sweating, shaking, and you know you've done it. This is your magnum opus. You feel your chest tighten with excitement. You've never felt this way before in your life. It's addicting. You stand in the center of the attic, the man still in front of you. You want to get closer. You take another step closer, the man's posture is tightened. You can almost see the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end, on end. He's so pure, so helpless, your mouth waters. You stand a step away from the man. You step forward until you're, until you nearly, until you nearly bump into the man's seat. Your smile hurts so badly. You grip your axe so tightly that your hands begin to burn. You've never felt more alive. You try your best to contain yourself, but you're verging on animalistic. It's euphoria. You're sure he can feel your hot breath on his neck. You're an artistic genius. This whole thing is just to stroke this guy's ego. kill him with the axe. You lift the axe ever so carefully over your head. You think to yourself, we never left. Great, great game. Wow. That was cool because, like, all of the moments were kind of, like, flooding back to me as I played it. That ending is so powerful, especially the scene where the lightning strikes. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So, that was We Never Left, and even though I've played it before, I wanted to experience it with you guys. I wanted to show it to you. This is something special, and I think the, um, 
standalone release was a good opportunity to go back and kind of experience that. And I had a good time, and I hope you guys did too. This is special, man. It's a special game. I really, really... Uh, you know, I remember why I, enjoy, why I enjoyed it so much when I played it in the Dreadx Collection 5. It was a standout game. Guys, thank you so much for experiencing this game with me again. I love you guys very much. Be good to each other. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks.